Today, Whiskey Creek is a thriving natural stream as it winds down the west slope of a 140-acre farm before it merges with the Bear River below. The project is located near Grace, Idaho in the Gentile Valley framed by majestic mountains. Farming and ranching are the foundation of the economy in this rural corner of Idaho. I mean, to stand here and look out there, it is a beautiful transition from what it was even just two years ago. So it's been uh, you know, very uh, worthwhile to me personally. And my wife, kids just think it's marvelous. The Whiskey Creek Project is a remarkable conservation achievement considering the stream had been buried in a pipe underneath a dairy barn and concrete pad for more than 50 years. Max says, do you think there's anything that you can do here? How can we make this a better project? And visiting with him and kind of what his vision was, and in working with Al Johnson, with the engineer for the commission, uh, we kind of came together with a consensus of, we need to daylight the stream. Manure from dairy cows and later beef cattle had been spreading from the concrete pad into Whiskey Creek, harming water quality. The stream is on the state list of degraded waters. Professionals from the Idaho Association of Soil and Water Conservation Districts, the Idaho Soil and Water Conservation Commission, and the Caribou Soil Conservation District wanted to improve the water quality on Whiskey Creek. By removing the barn, the manure waste, and the concrete pad, they would eliminate a key source of contamination. The project was funded by a water quality grant from the Environmental Protection Agency and the Idaho Department of Environmental Quality, matched with multiple contributions from local groups. A second aspect of the conservation project involved several water quality improvements on a nearby ranch owned by Cameron Williams. That project included the installation of three water troughs to draw cattle away from the Bear River. Troughs were uh, to help break up our pastures so we had more calving pastures so we'd keep smaller groups of cattle and, and to pull cattle off the river. Um, stream bank condition is always important to us. Uh. To get started at the Whiskey Creek site, the first step was to take down the barn and remove the concrete pad. Christopher Banks, the grant writer and project manager, crafted the grant application in such a way to use the barn and concrete demolition as matching funds, saving a lot of money for all concerned. It's going to be expensive because we've got to dispose of all the waste. We've got to dispose of all the materials, the cement, the wood, the pipe, everything. And we started looking into a landfill, and it was going to be a lot of money. Uh, so Max came up with the idea of let's take it down gently, and we're going to donate the materials to other people. And so as he tore the barn down, uh, the wood was donated to one group, the tin was donated to another group, the cement blocks were donated to ladies in the community for walkways and gardens. In addition, Banks got a permit from the county to bury the concrete waste on site. Probably saved us right close to $60,000 in landfill fees, not having to haul the cement in trucking and the landfill fee just to get it there. The wood from the barn structure was donated to the Boys and Girls Club in Salt Lake City, Utah. Alan Johnson, an engineer for the Conservation Commission, designed the new stream course from scratch. Other than doing a straight shot, uh, I designed a, a meandering system with, with pools so that that water would have some place for the, the flood energy to go. So it's more of a natural uh, functioning system. Johnson designed a 320-foot natural stream course with various types of rock to absorb the water's energy as it runs downhill. We excavated a lot of material out of this, dug down about three feet below the existing stream as it is now and brought in gravel and, and rock to, to form the, the stream channel. Basically with its cascading and ripple sections and then ending in pools where we turn the corner to go down to the next pool. Johnson's stream restoration plans also called for planting willows and riparian vegetation along the stream. But there is a lot of natural riparian vegetation coming. A stream is not fully uh, functioning until you have a riparian forest. That takes time. The riparian vegetation helps form a natural stream environment where aquatic insects can thrive, forming part of the food chain for fish to survive. 
Johnson and others sampled Whiskey Creek for stream insects to check on stream health. What I've seen so far, uh, water quality is a definite improvement. Looked at it just today, I found mayflies and caddisflies both, which are a pretty good indicator that our water quality is fairly good. The last step in the Whiskey Creek project was to plant 20,000 square feet of sod and willow cuttings on the stream bank. Senior high kids from North Gem in Bancroft participated. The school mascot is the cowboy, so for service projects it's called Cowboys in Action. Well, we came up here and it was all dirt covering everywhere. So we came out here and we, did, we laid all this sod out and then we planted trees along the bank and that was really fun. We brought our whole high school, which was about 60 kids, but we got it done pretty quick. It's supposed to be out here all day, but it only took up about half the day. Max Nichols' wife, Terry, bought 28 pizzas to feed the hungry kids after the work was done. Whiskey Creek flows down the hill from Max Nichols Farm into the Bear River in the valley below. A few miles upstream, Cameron Williams talks about the conservation project on his ranch, which also will benefit the Bear River. My water quality project, I was able to install uh, the solar panel uh, on an old domestic house well that, on a house that was here. And then I was able to install three water troughs. And then I was also able to build a corral to utilize in the spring when we're calving. And the water troughs help improve water quality because they draw the cattle away from the Bear River. Cattle were running, they do drink out of the river and we wanted to minimize that impact. All of the troughs are a quarter mile off the river and provide clean, sufficient water for the livestock. The cattle spend the winter and spring on the home ranch by the Bear River and the summer on public lands nearby. As we're calving in the spring, we try and keep smaller groups of cattle, like 50 head, to prevent disease and keep cattle, calves of the same age together. Yeah, we run on a grazing association that's a majority state land and then some private ownership with uh, about 30 other ranching operations. Uh, we trail our cattle out to it from here in the spring, our summer pastures. When Williams cattle are out on public range in the summer, that allows the pastures on the home ranch to grow grass for grazing when the cattle return in the fall. Now the grass has grown over a foot high after it was grazed last spring. It's a place where Cameron and his family can ride horseback for fun along the Bear River. The water quality improvements on Whiskey Creek and the Bear River at the Williams Ranch will contribute to the overall health of the Bear River as it flows south from Idaho to the Great Salt Lake. There are multiple water quality projects going on in the Bear River area as it flows south from Idaho to the Great Salt Lake. The Bear flows through Utah, Wyoming, and Idaho before it returns again to Utah where it flows into the Bear River National Wildlife Refuge and then finally into the Great Salt Lake. A tri-state monitoring program with 21 stations tracks water quality gains as they occur. With continued investment in conservation projects, the water quality of the Bear River should improve over time. And certainly, the Whiskey Creek Project and the Williams Project on the Bear River will have lasting value. Max Nichols takes great pride in sitting by Whiskey Creek with his wife, enjoying the rushing water and the spectacular view across the Gentile Valley to the mountains above. They come all the time. People come down and uh, drive down stop and see, come over here, and it's just a pleasant place to come and visit.